one step beyond. I would like to introduce you to a garden, a unique garden, a garden which demonstrates the power a garden can bring to a city, its people, and its nature. The garden is Bay South, gardens by the bay in Singapore. Singapore is just a few miles from the equator and is always hot and humid. When you step outside, you typically want to run for shade or shelter, or if you're like me, to run back inside to get a blast of air conditioning to cool down. So enabling people to appreciate plants in a comfortable environment was a key part of our design thinking, as well as the introduction of more, more plant diversity and color. Singapore doesn't have any seasons, it's just wet or dry, but always hot. As a landscape architect, our particular design approach is about connecting people with nature. So how could we use this garden to really showcase plants in all their forms, colors, textures, and functions, and they understand their importance to us as humans in the 21st century? These images show the starting context for the site. The garden was to be the focus of the extended downtown area of Singapore. It was on reclaimed land and overlooked by the huge Marina Bay Sands Hotel. How could a garden sit in this context? The garden was also to be surrounded in the future by high-rise buildings and skyscrapers. It was an unknown and changing city context, but also a vast scale to design a garden. The site area is equivalent to 90 football pitches. The project also had to capture the vision of Singapore, the city in a garden, and to create a popular community garden, as well as a landmark destination. It was also to try and, and hopefully grab the world's attention. It was a unique challenge with huge ambition. The starting point for me was to understand what is a garden? What are the key ingredients of a garden? And how does it differ from a park? How can a garden become a, a part of everyday city life? And how can we create a garden of the future when we don't know what the future city context will look like? There are many ways to describe a garden. But the definition that inspired our approach not only spoke about the beauty of gardens, but also about their potential to evoke wonder and to create unknown experiences. Gardens are also, by their very nature, artificial and in need of management and care. So it seemed to me that there was also an opportunity to develop a new approach to the future management of our landscapes in cities. I've always been interested in the finding the hidden connections within a project, the hidden systems to create an ecosystem with enhanced sustainability cycles, linking together and feeding off one another. I really like this early diagram that we produced, which explored the idea of these integrated strategies for energy, water, and resources, whilst creating a healthy habitat for people and wildlife. It also started to introduce the idea of the super trees, or what we called the super trees, which would serve as the env environmental engines for the conservatories, providing both cooling and en energy production. The garden also needed a strong underlying design narrative and concept to make this project unique to Singapore. We settled on the idea of using the orchid as the inspiration or the metaphor for the gardens. The orchid is actually the, the national flower of Singapore. This conceptual narrative then translated into the landscape design, with the stems of the orchid stretching out, becoming the path network across the gardens, the flowers, the special gardens, the leaves, the three-dimensional earth forms, and the roots, the underlying infrastructure. The two conservatories, the two cooled conservatories, sit beautifully on the marina waterfront and were the key anchors of the garden. Creating a cool house in the tropics in a sustainable way was a huge challenge. And the engineers developed a sophisticated strategy for the cooling using a biomass boiler and liquid desiccant technology to deliver a carbon neutral cooling system. Inside the conservatories, we wanted to create two very different garden experiences. Two different worlds, if you like. The flower dome is the theater of plants. It was also about capturing the essence of the plants the flowers, the scents of the Mediterranean plant world. One of the most popular annual events in the flower domes is actually tulip mania. 
You may appreciate those. Every year, a mass of refrigerated bulbs are flown from here in Holland by KLM and then transferred to the flower dome. The tulip bulbs are planted out, and after a few days, they bloom, and the flower field is transformed. Hundreds of plants and trees from around the world were sourced for the conservatories. These were what we called, many of these were the VIPs of the project, the very important plants. These included the amazing baobab trees from Africa and Australia, as well as these beautiful 600-year-old olive trees from Spain. These trees were shipped in special containers from around the world to Singapore. And one of the big old baobab trees was actually out at sea for over 60 days. And when it arrived in Singapore and transferred to the site, it caused huge traffic jams throughout the city. The cloud forest dome is a distinct contrast to the flower dome. It is a more immersive journey through a lush, exotic cloud forest environment with mists and waterfalls. It was inspired by the tropical montane areas of Mount Kinabalu in Sabah. The design thinker was really just to put a mountain in the middle of the dome and to clothe it in greenery. But rather than simply create a sort of false mountainside or, or fake rock face, we developed the idea of the mountain as this lattice structure with a living render skin that could be planted and support greenery. The mountain is 35 meters high and supports a waterfall, which transforms at night through lighting. You experience it by traveling to the top in a lift and then winding your way down, around and through the mountain on these series of suspended walkways. The overall experience of the garden is totally immersive. And when the misters are on, you are transported to this sort of misty, eerie environment of the cloud forest. At the heart of the garden are the super trees. For the gardens to compete with the scale of the city, they needed to have something of equal scale and distinction. We wanted to create a unique centerpiece that by day would become these amazing vertical gardens and then at night be transformed into a spectacular nighttime destination. The inspiration for the super trees was in part the Valley of the Giants near, near Perth in southwest Australia, but also the magical scenes, experiences of the forest scene in Princess Monarchy, the Studio Ghibli animation. They evoke this sort of sense of science fiction, but are real, big, and expressive in scale and color. They were designed and imagined by landscape architects and engineers, and are this fusion of design, nature, and technology. We always wanted the super trees to have this lightness of structure, to be connected to the gardens, and to have a color to contrast with the city skyline in the background. We always saw the super trees as the garden counterpoint to the conservatories, helping to change the center of gravity and drawing visitors and people into the real heart of the gardens. There are 18 super trees in total, and they range in height from 25 to 50 meters, with a bar at the top of the tallest tree. They also support an aerial walkway with suspended tensioned wires within the canopies. Like the gardens, we wanted them to work hard in terms of their sustainability, and they perform a number of important environmental functions. These include not only providing shade for people, but also supporting solar panels for the lighting and energy production, as well as assisting with the exhausting and venting. One of the super trees actually hides a 37-meter high chimney contained within its trunk, connected back to the biomass boiler. At night, the super trees come to life, and they are transformed through the lighting. The main grove of the super trees is now a popular destination for both residents and visitors, and it's become a unique public space for the city. And one of the great things is watching how public life plays out there. The botanical diversity of the gardens is now considerable. The gardens now contain over 280,000 plants from every continent, except Antarctica. It is also really exciting to see that the gardens are now home to new wildlife in the city, such as this family of smooth-coated otters. And whilst the, the plants are the main focus or the stars of the gardens, there is a series of places for people. We always wanted the gardens to become the sort of garden living room of the city and to capture a range of different atmospheres and moods and characters. And I think one of the, the great things I take from this kind of project is watching people experience the gardens at first hand and using their own imagination and different ways of engaging with the different spaces. I think the sense of playfulness within the gardens and the wide appeal across all ages 
and coaches has helped them make, to make the gardens a real success. Since their opening in 2012, they've now had over 25 million visitors. To imagine a project like this, it is all about collaboration. And throughout the project, I think there was a real blurring of the design boundaries. And it's not clear where, say, the engineering or the horticulture or the architecture or the landscape design starts and stops. And I think this is a, a great reflection on the amazing collaboration that existed right through the team with the client, the designers, the contractors and the gardeners. We're also very proud to see that Gardens by the Bay was featured in the BBC's Planet Earth documentary with Sir David Attenborough and used as a reference for city greening and the coexistence of man and nature. Here is a short clip. But perhaps the most spectacular example of city greening is this grove of super trees. These 150 feet high metal structures are now full of life. Creepers have been planted to grow over the outermost branches. This is a new urban world that we have now designed and built with others in mind. Create the space and the animals will come. Is this a vision of our cities of the future? It could be possible to see wildlife thriving within our cities across the planet. We hope that Gardens by the Bay conveys something to the wider world about the importance of beauty and wonder in our parks and gardens. And we hope that it inspires others to go one step beyond and to bring the power of nature, integrated thinking and imagination into the heart of our future cities. Thank you. <laughs>